I think there are two main clinical implications of this work for cancer in general. The first involves development of new therapeutics. For the last decade, and particularly since the advent of Gleevec for the treatment of chronic myelogenous leukemia, most pharmaceutical development work has been on targeting specific genes, so-called targeting therapies. And what we now know from the study of these two cancers, plus the two that we studied in the past, is that leukemia is quite different from most solid tumors. In fact, dramatically different. There is no real analog to the target that Gleevec uh, works against in most solid tumors. Now, we didn't know that when we started, and in fact, part of the reason that we did these studies was to find an example an analog of the BCR able, the target of Gleevec. But the solid tumors, the common cancers that uh, account for 95% of cancer deaths, are really quite different. There's no single major gene. There are literally 60 mutations, roughly, uh, in genes in each cancer. And it's only in aggregate that they cause tumors. It's much more complex. And it suggests that the optimum way to develop new therapeutics is to target the pathways, the limited number of pathways through which these genes act. That's a completely different way of looking at drug development. But I think if new drugs are to pertain to the majority of cancers of any given type or the majority uh, of cancers, um, they're going to have to target these pathways rather than individual genes. Target the metabolic disturbances that are common features of pancreatic brain tumors and we believe most other cancers. Target the disrupted cell cycle. Target the disrupted the disrupted repair of DNA. So this pathway idea suggests a different way of screening for new drugs and developing new therapeutics. The second implication is that perhaps the development of new therapeutics is not the best way to go in the future at all because it is so complex perhaps it will continue to be difficult to develop drugs that will really result in cures. Now, today about 95% of cancer research is, um, of applied cancer research, goes to the development of drugs, and only one or a few percent goes to prevention or early detection. Perhaps what we should be doing is reversing those percentages and have much more work and funding go to prevention or early detection. And our research highlights several, a couple of different kinds of, of research that could benefit from this knowledge. First, imaging. These pathways that are common to cancer certainly could be the focus of new imaging methods. Methods that detect um, the, the end result, the metabolic disturbances, the changes in the cell cycle. And the second way would be to actually detect the mutant genes. We now know precisely how many mutant genes there are in typical cancers. With new technologies, it's actually very simple to detect them in cancers. And it's not much of a stretch to suggest that we could detect these mutant genes in early stage of cancers by examining the blood or uh, other clinical, easily obtained clinical samples. The benefits of early detection are that almost all cancers should be curable if they're caught early enough before they've spread. That's true even in pancreas and brain. The trick is to catch them early and the mutant genes provide a uniquely specific way, at least in theory, to make that early detection possible.